director of programs. And also I appreciate the speech delivered by the Senior Bishop. I'm really grateful and humbled and uh, I want to respond that the government here in Central Province will remain committed to working with the church. And uh, I want to urge the church at large in Central Province to come on board to work with us. You are aware that the government under the leadership of His Excellency President Nakaide Chilem has directed more funds to the grassroots. Empowerment Fund and also bazaaris. Under the Empowerment Fund definitely we will need to work with the church to ensure that the beneficiaries of those empowerment funds have got the capacity to utilize those funds. Some of our cooperative members, they are formed cooperatives, but they may not even understand what a cooperative is. It's the church's hand together with government is going to ensure that the utilization of this fund is probably put to good use. I want to recognize the presence of the Synod Bishop, Reverend Bishop Stilima, the General Secretary, Reverend Shibasha Mosawa, all the Presbyterian Bishops, all the former Synod Bishops present, all the former General Secretaries present, all the clergy and lay leaders present, fellow believers in the Lord, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I wish to welcome you to Central Province and to Kawe in particular. I believe ours is the best province in Zambia. That is why you are having this very important <laughs> meeting here today. And the bishop indicated that actually it was divine. <laughs> Senior Bishop, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted and humbled to have been invited to be part of this very important and historic occasion of the United Church of Zambia, 30th Synod meeting. I'm informed that the Synod meetings takes place every two years to deliberate and make decisions on various church matters. I therefore wish to think, thank the church for according me this rare honor to grace this very important event. Senior Bishop, the government of the Republic of Zambia and the leadership of His Excellency, the President, Mr. Akainde Chilema, places high premium on the role the church plays in supplementing government efforts and in the spiritual social and moral development of our nation. My Lord Bishops, as government, we are cognizant of the pivotal role that the United Church of Zambia plays in the provision of education and health services through its schools and hospitals across the country. I'm aware that among the schools that the church runs, include Kafue Boys, Secondary School in Kafue, Sefula Secondary School in Mongu, Masuku Secondary School in Choma, Lugwa Secondary School in Chisali, Mepo Show Girls Secondary School in Mbereshi, Mwenzo Girls Secondary School in Nakonde, and Chipembi Girls Secondary School in Chisamba of Central Province. 
The health facilities include Mwandi Hospital in Mwandi of Western Province, Kafue Rural Health Center in Kafue of Lusaka Province, Jakaibo Health Center in Solwezi of Northwestern Province. These institutions are vehicles through which the church continues to carry out its work in line with its mission, which is rooted in on the gospel of Jesus Christ to provide holistic salvation to God's people and the entire creation. <coughs> Synod Bishop, sir, I am delighted to learn that this synod has gathered under the church's annual theme, All One in Christ, which is also the church's tongue drawn from John 17 verse 21. In other words, the theme is a clarion call for unity at all levels of our community and comes at a time when our communities are divided along social, political, and economic lines. Amidst such challenges, government continues to look up to the church as a promoter of unity and reconciler of our communities. Senior Bishop, sir, distinguished invited guests, the Constitution of Zambia Amendment Act of 2016 under Article 8 provides for national values and principles. Some of the national values and principles include morality and ethics, patriotism and national unity, human dignity, equity, social justice, equality and non-discrimination, just to mention but a few. Therefore, as a government, we remain supportive and appreciative of the church's efforts towards promoting morality, unity, human dignity, and social justice because these not only speak to our constitutional requirement, but also form the very fiber on which our nation is anchored. Therefore, I therefore wish to aid you as the church, not to tire in efforts to promote unity, equality, social justice, and the well-being of our respective of their status in society. So let Bishop sir, I am also reliably informed that the church last year approved an investment policy aimed at providing a policy framework to allow the church venture into different business portfolios that would enable it effectively run its mission. I would like to commend the church for this initiative as it will help in responding to the current economic trends which have negatively impacted all sectors of the society, including the church. This resonates well with the policy of the new dawn government of promoting the economic well-being of its citizenry as evidenced through the creation of the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. As I conclude, I wish to reiterate that as a government, we remain open to working with the change and indeed all well-meaning individuals and stakeholders in promoting the well-being of our great nation. My office is open for engagements aimed at promoting the well-being of our country. We need to work together to promote well-being of our communities and God's people. Finally, I wish to once again thank you for inviting me to this very important meeting and wish you all oh God's guidance and wisdom as you deliberate on various church issues. As a politician, no politicians, they will speak for three hours, then they will say with these few words. <laughs>
with these few words. <laughs> May the Lord God Almighty bless you and I thank you. Thank you.